Video games thrive on immersion, and the more immersed you are, the easier it is to get got by a jump scare. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 13 of the biggest jump scares in video games. Starting off with number 13, Resident Evil 7, Jack busting through a wall. Let's start this list off with a nice memorable scare that's arguably from the scariest Resident Evil game to date. After the extended prolong, main character Ethan Winters is captured by the insane Baker family and forced to join them for dinner. After this extended Texas Chainsaw Massacre homage, Ethan breaks free of his bindings and this is where you're given free reign to finally start exploring the house. Only problem is the family patriarch and creepy serial killer glasses enthusiast Jack Baker is lurking around. And if he catches you, there's going to be problems. If he spots you, it's inevitable. You'll probably run down this long hallway. You might even think you lost the guy because he's nowhere in sight. Go you wasted your time. Q Jack straight up bursting through the wall right in front of you. Funny thing is, there's a boarded up door right beside him. He could have broken that down, but that would have been more obvious, wouldn't it? That's what's so effective about this scare. You're already on the edge and they throw a curveball at you. Another thing I appreciate, it's the optional. If you don't get spotted by Jack, the scene just doesn't happen. I actually missed it the first time through the game because I'm so good at sneaking around. Um, so when I went back again and saw this happen, it was like I'm playing the game for the first time again. And number 12 is The Witcher 3's Hooded Woman. A lot of our favorite jump scares are carefully curated and heavily scripted with a lot of bells and whistles to really make the scare pop. But sometimes what a game needs to scare the pants off someone is the left field and coming out of it. This is one of those jump scares. Totally unexpected. I could talk about something more conventional like that one cursed house mission with the little creature in the basement. But if we're being totally honest here, this jump scare got me way worse. So there's this random location in the Blood and Wine expansion called the Olive Grove. Seems totally innocuous, but if you explore the area, you'll find this woman in a red hood who doesn't want to talk to you and a dead body in a shack. If you examine the body and read the diary, it reveals a sordid tale that doesn't immediately jump out as being the precursor of any sort of scare, but when you close the book and turn around... <laughs> the woman suddenly transforms into a powerful monster and attacks. These are the sort of beasts that only appear as part of quests, they're unique, powerful enemies you never expect to just run into in the wild. Another reason why this scare works so well is the woman is seemingly just some generic NPC. There's multiple women with hoods all over the place. She doesn't seem unique and doesn't have a name, so you're inclined to think, oh, just another background NPC, who cares? So when she goes beast mode and starts beating on you, it's unlike anything you've seen in the game up to this point. At number 11 is that tentacle out of nowhere in Dead Space. For a game so synonymous with jump scares, the original Dead Space doesn't actually have that many, at least from going back and playing it again. There definitely aren't zero, but a lot of the moments I've seen described as jump scares in this game don't really fit the bill. They're kind of just built up to or regular old horror segments rather than jump scares. But man, the first time you get attacked by one of those tentacle monsters, it just comes out of nowhere and drags you down a hallway. Ooh, that is intense, man. This thing scared the crap out of me back in the day. It caught me so off guard, I didn't really know what to do. The first time you encounter one of these things is in Chapter 3. It suddenly just grabs you and you go into a random corridor. No buildup, no nothing. It's just this giant thing that comes out of nowhere and drags Isaac to death unless you intervene. If you're like me, you just kind of sat there uselessly and got killed, not realizing you had control. Because yes, it does feel like a cutscene. It is not. Once you realize that all you have to do is shoot the weak point, it's not that scary, but it is a jump scare. All it needs is a few seconds and then it's good. Then the tentacle things are, uh, I mean, really top level jump scare stuff, to be honest. At number 10 in Batman Arkham Knight, the Man Bat. Rocksteady's Arkham games were genre-bending masterpieces that always kept players on their toes. You'd think a game where you play as a completely unflappable superhero wouldn't be that good for horror, but the developers knew that they didn't have to scare Batman. They just had to scare the player. And yeah, they managed to scare pretty much everybody who played Arkham Knight the first time with this out-of-nowhere appearance of the Man Bat. What's clever about this scare is they use the game's mechanics against you. One of the more common things you're doing in Arkham Knight is grappling onto building ledges. It's something and you're really, I mean, you're doing it constantly, and you have been for the past three, hell, four games in the Arkham series. So imagine our collective surprise when. Uh, 
out of nowhere, you grapple up to the ledge, and this time, a giant bat monster appears out of nowhere and scares the hell out of you. It's not just that it's unexpected, either. It's cinematic as hell with a camera zoom and everything. It's all done seamlessly. That's the magic of Rocksteady from this team. They were able to mix cinematics into the gameplay in a way that's almost impossible to notice the transition, but it's one of those all-time jump scares. Even though the reality of the game is that Batman is in no danger from this thing. I mean, it's Batman. on your face when you saw him. <laughs> and number nine is Condemned Criminal Origins, the body in the locker. Even though this game's really starting to show its age, it's got some uniquely unpleasant vibes all its own. Uh, combining serial killers and urban exploration is something that it does to great effect, and this game manages to hit a pretty good balance between realistic and supernatural stuff. It's one of the first games to intentionally use liminal space to great effect, and it's just creepy as hell for the most part. It's not really a jump scare game, but there is one moment that really sticks out. Um, between wandering and beating people to death with improvised weapons, you'll also be investigating crime scenes. There's a few safe spaces in the game, and these are among them while you're investigating. Uh, there's no enemies around. Uh, you're used to nothing happening in investigation areas. So when you're exploring this abandoned secondary school, you'll find the tortured body of a former PE teacher. He's missing an arm. He's gray. His face is horribly mangled. By all accounts, he's dead. Another victim of the creatively named serial killer, The Torturer. So no surprise, at least in hindsight, when you zoom in on his face and take a picture... Me. The guy suddenly springs to life and he grabs you. Even if you did see that coming back in the day, it still it creeps me out. The whole situation is so grotesque, it's hard not to squirm. And number eight is Sekiro, the, uh, the woo guy. Pretty much every Souls game has some horror elements, but for me, the least horrific game in the series probably has the most memorable jump scare. I'm talking about this guy at Ashina Castle, the, the famous woo guy, because of the noise that he makes when he attacks you. I chuckle a little bit, but this entry is really unusual because it's in broad daylight. It's in an area that's not even designed to be scary. You're out in the open. It seems like nothing could ambush you. And when it does, it really catches you off guard. For most players, you don't even see this guy coming. You just get this loud noise followed by sudden death out of nowhere. You may have noticed these kites flying in the background, but what you didn't see was that they're actually ninja tar ninjas in disguise. Seriously, they're clinging the kites, and if you get close enough, they attack. It's not even really a conventional jump scare. It's just an enemy's surprise attack, but it's so unexpected that it still scares the crap out of people. It's such an odd and actually kind of goofy moment that it's more surprising than straight up scary, but surprise is like 80% of what makes a good jump scare, and I jumped in fear when this happened. And number seven is Super Mario 64's piano. Hats off to the madman who managed to sneak this thing into Super Mario 64. Managed to scar a lot of kids for life, including uh, your favorite game, Bird. The early PlayStation and Nintendo 64 games already had a kind of eerie atmosphere to them. There's something vaguely unsettling about these barren, undetailed, low-poly worlds from mid-90s. If you're a kid, you might already be in the mindset to be scared, depending on a few factors. But, you know, I, I still get a little paranoid playing these games now. Stuff like this gave us a reason to be paranoid, too. I'm talking about the Mad Piano for Big Booze Haunt. <laughs> Uh, here's the thing, other than that creepy music that played over the carousel, there's really nothing scary about this level. It's a ghost house, yeah, but it's like baby's first ghost house. The one in Banjo-Kazooie is scarier, and that's saying something, because neither of these places are scary. Uh, all that said, this stupid piano still got me. Still does to this day. It's just so unexpected and bizarre. Enemies in Mario games can be pretty formulaic, usually know what you're getting, but they throw this thing at you out of nowhere. It's totally unexpected. It terrifies the brains of preteens everywhere. And number six is the Labyrinth Sage from Bloodborne. In a world of incomprehensible nightmares beyond mortal understanding, the thing that really scares people is a guy who yells really loud. <laughs> Ah! 
Bloodborne uh, is a game that takes a deeply unnerving turn at Cosmic Horror, the second half of the game. And while this is the most obviously horrific game from has ever made, the one thing that really scared us was honestly pretty mundane. There's a reason this guy freaked us all out, though. The Chalice Dungeons are already pretty creepy because they're randomly generated. You don't know what's going to be around every corner. Like, literally, you can't. Most enemies are things you'd fight in the regular game, but this elongated freak just comes screeching out of the darkness, and you've never seen him before, and his screams are so piercing and unexpected it's impossible not to jump. It's the cheapest of cheap scares, but it works. And this guy appears infrequently enough that you never quite get used to it. It always seems to know when to show up again when you're letting your guard down, right when you think, ah, that's probably safe. That uh, labyrinth sage ain't gonna come around ever again. Oh, there he is. There's that blood curdling scream. It's go time. <laughs> At number five is Prey, uh, the looking glass surprise. Other than the many, many mimics, Prey isn't that scary of a game, and that's by design. It's more of a systematic game than a terrifying one. There are just too many immersive sim elements, too much freedom of expression to be truly terrifying, but man, this jump scare still got me good. Um, if you know, you know. It's the one in Cytronix where you can calibrate the looking glass station. It's one of those perfect buildups that feels totally natural and in hindsight, very obvious. But the moment it, it happens, you just, you don't see it coming. When you enter the area, you notice a button on the screen. You press it, moves you to a new location. It's part of the system calibration. Keep doing this till out of nowhere, an alien appears behind the station. And if you're like me, that scares the shit out of you. It's just really well-timed, really creative, uh, and it's in a game that has otherwise no other jump scares that I'm really aware of. At least none as carefully designed as this one. And number four is Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl, the controller. It's hard to just call a regular attack a jump scare, but this attack is so bizarre and unexpected, it really does count. In Stalker, you have to contend with multiple violent mutants, but they do mostly things that you'd expect, like trying to claw you to death, mostly. The controller, different. It's a rare humanoid mutant with a long-range psychic attack that's not just highly damaging, it's also terrifying if it hits you with it, and it definitely will the first time you see it, uh, then it re wrests control from you for a second and pulls your vision into the controller. <laughs> Almost impossible to describe, but it's easy to see. It's bewildering and terrifying. Uh, a big part of why this thing's so effective is just how unexpected it is. Games almost never mess with your camera in this way. And number three is Eternal Darkness, the bathtub. Short but terrifying. This jump scare lasts less than five seconds. Doesn't have anything to do with anything, but for many people, it's the defining moment in Eternal Darkness. The part that sticks out in their memories the most. There are plenty of scary things that happen in this game because of the sanity effects, but this one's scripted. The first time you get into the bathroom and examine the bathtub, you're assaulted with this vision of your main character. <laughs> Flashes for a second, then it disappears, long enough to imprint in your mind, but also leave you totally bewildered. On its own, may not be the most impressive jump scare, but if you really take the entire game into account and judge it, it really feels like it came out of nowhere. Few games do, did this sort of mind-bending visual trickery back when this game came out. It's a moment that's completely unexpected and surprisingly graphic, especially because the house is supposed to be where you're safe, but not anymore. Moving on to number two, the dog hallway in Resident Evil 1. Probably one of the most famous jump scares. There's plenty of other good candidates for this list uh, on pretty much every other Resident Evil game. But if we're going with the biggest, got to pick one of the originals. It's the one that started it all, baby. Now, obviously, jump scares didn't start in video games in Resident Evil. There were plenty of other horror games before it. Um, but for a lot of people, this was uh, gamers' first encounter with horror tropes, so to speak. At least in a game. And while this game isn't really that scary anymore for a lot of reasons, this hallway still gets me. It's an extremely simple but very effective setup. You enter a hallway that seems completely safe, but get far enough and out of nowhere, a zombie dog busts through the window nearest the screen. It's pretty startling now, but back then it was especially impressive because games did not do things like this. If there was a pre-rendered background, the expectation was nothing was going to change in that world. The hallway proved that wasn't the case. Uh, anything could jump out at you at any time. Similar moments popped up in later games, but for me, the most legendary jump scare is the most basic, and it set a pretty high bar uh, for quality that the rest of the games in the series had to reach for. And finally, at number one, P.T. It's been close to nine years since PT was delisted, but its haunting power still lingers in our mind. 
For a game so basic, there's something deeply unsettling about it. It really is one of the most terrifying games of all time, and it's barely a game. It pretty much invented a horror formula that has yet to be surpassed. All games try to copy it and fail. Uh, there's just some kind of ultimately going on here that makes PT work better than any other. When I first played it, I didn't even think there were jump scares. The game takes its sweet time and lures you into thinking it's a spooky walking simulator. You know, where there's disturbing visuals, but nothing can really hurt you. And then the game hurts you. It's the oldest trick in the book, the old look behind you gag, but what makes this work so well is just how grotesque the ghost or monster or whatever Lisa's is supposed to be is. The crazy camera, horrifying face, and disgusting sounds make the jump scare death absolutely unbearable the first time you see it. This is a horror game that knows that less is more, and that principle applies so well here. And when it comes time to really scare the player, they pull out all the stops, and it works fantastically. There's no way to know if the actual Silent Hill game that it was a teaser for would have been as good, or any good even, but if PT was anything to go by, would have been interesting at least. Interesting and of course horrifying. And, and that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, it's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is of course a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter, at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.